even some of the taller trees in the back. Um, what we've done lately with some people who have that, who have those really big trees in the back is we've used some, whether it be an up light or an in-ground light, depending on where those um, trees are located and had like a really bright, intense, like a 50 watt equivalent. So, um, you know, almost twice as bright as the ones you'd have here. Um, but then we have it. So it's kind of just lighting the canopies from the back uh, is a really nice effect because you still get that view from the front, but then you also get to look at that from the back. And uh, we call that kind of perimeter lighting if you're looking at it from the back, because it just now you can see the perimeter of your property. So it makes everything look bigger, but it also creates a cool viewing effect uh, from the front because you've got these towering trees lit up. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you wanna see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's gonna look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. Hey, Joe, uh, thanks for your email. Thanks for your pictures here. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give you some really uh, simple ideas and some things that I would do. I mean, first off, I would probably just use a couple of up lights um, like these <clears throat> um, to highlight the house. Um, so like you said, uh, what I would probably do is I'd probably have like four of those across here that just kind of highlight the stonework. Um, you could do like three, but I just kind of know from experience that it, it usually tends to leave a little bit of a darker spot unless you had like a big wash light, but it's just, it's a different effect. So I think you'd be better off kind of just having four wash lights evenly spread out against this wall <clears throat> um, to do some path and garden light in an area like that. And same thing over here. Um, you know, there's different versions of path lights. Uh, these, these would probably be good if you have a larger, uh, flower bed and you're going to be planting some stuff. The reason being is because uh, with those, the light goes, you know, 360 degrees around the, uh, the plant so that if you were to put it there, it's going to highlight the pathway, but then it's also going to put light back into whatever you're planting there. And usually the way I do that, especially if I'm going to have like four, uh, accent lights here, which I, I do think is a better option because you're just going to have a better viewing of those lights and get a better effect. Um, but then you just kind of stagger those path lights in between where you have those. So maybe you only have like three, um, or you have one here, one here, and kind of one on the corner and you kind of limit those a little bit. It's, uh, it's better on the pocketbook and, uh, keep in mind, you will get a little bit of reflective light from those up lights on the house, uh, that will just help light this area altogether as well. Um, but then if you have a path light here, you know, you might throw maybe two more along this side <clears throat> just to help light the, the walkway a little bit. Um, I would continue, uh, that theme with the up lights. I think just trying to think here, the best way of probably doing it, I'd probably still try and have two up lights kind of on the corners of the windows on both sides. And, and the reason being is because if you don't put anything back here, what tends to happen is this just ends up looking like a big dark spot. Um, if you're planting something kind of in front of this window, then I like the idea of just putting an up light on a tree that's, uh, that's in front of this, which is what a lot of people do. Um, this little section here, uh, a nice little thing I like to do is actually using a wash light. Um, so kind of like this, similar to an up light, it's just, it's not as bright, uh, or intense. Uh, it's got a softer, uh, softer wider angle lens on it. And just kind of having that in here that highlights this, but then kind of highlights it against this back wall a little bit. It's not going to give you a lot of light back there, but it's going to kind of create a little bit of a shadowing from this plant, which is always kind of a nice effect. And then it's a good balance. If you have like, say, for example, a path light here, you kind of have this, area lit with a wash light and then you have like another path light on the other side there um so that's kind of how i would do that section and again here's the same thing where you could kind of you know if you have those two up lights um and just have a path and garden light here and here uh and really all it does is in this case it's not highlighting the walkway but it's just going to highlight the garden bed a little bit um and it creates that nice uh balance of up lighting and then down lighting below. So something you, you may want to consider, um, with any trees that you're planting. I mean, realistically, if you're planting any smaller shrubs in that, that you want to highlight that are going to be under six feet, a wash light is a really good option. Anything over six feet to 20 feet high, um, an up light like this is, is a really good option, um, to do that with the one recommendation or tip that I will, <clears throat> um, mention 
I find a lot of people do, especially when they're lighting the house or anything like that, is they'll bring the lights way back here and shine them at the house where if you really want to wash the stone and bring out the subtleties in it, you want to get it a little bit closer. It's kind of maybe that 12 to 18 inch range and having it shine more upright. Um, and that's a good rule of thumb with any up lights you're going to use on the property. You're almost better off to always uh, have them angled more upright uh, than at the at the structure. It just creates a better effect. And the last thing I'll talk about, and I've, I've done this quite a bit recently, um, keep in mind some of these things too, even though they're not on the front, that could be a nice way to accent that with say like a wash light, even though it's further back, you still get the viewing angle from the front. And then even some of the taller trees in the back, um, what we've done lately with some people who have that, who have those really big trees in the back is we've used some, whether it be an up light or an in-ground light, depending on where those um, trees are located and had like a really bright, intense, like a 50 watt equivalent. So, um, you know, almost twice as bright as the ones you'd have here. Um, but then we have it so it's kind of just lighting the canopies from the back uh, is a really nice effect because you still get that view from the front, but then you also get to look at that from the back. And uh, we call that kind of perimeter lighting if you're looking at it from the back because it just now you can see the perimeter of your property. So it makes everything look bigger, but it also creates a cool viewing effect uh, from the front because you've got these towering trees lit up. Um, that you see from the front yard. So Joe, hopefully that gives you some ideas. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, you can definitely go and, and kind of play around on the website, pick the different lights. Uh, your transformer will easily handle, um, you know, all the lights you probably need for the front and the back. Uh, just make sure your wire runs aren't too long so you're not running into any voltage drop. But if you're not running anything over 250 feet, you're probably fine. So let me know if there's anything else I can help with and we can go from there. Hey guys, so I just want to show you, uh, we're going to use our accent light a whole bunch in this property. Um, and a lot of uh, common areas we're going to use that is on some nice trees. We've got a really nice tree here that we're going to try and focus on. Um, but one thing I see people do too often or more times than not is instead of trying to get that, tr that light nice and close to the tree and having it shine up so you're taking advantage of all the barking structure and then all the branching up top is they'll bring it far back and try and aim it at the tree. And what happens there is they tend to miss a lot of the lower portions of the trees. And then also when it's, um, you know, depending on the area you, you live in, if you start losing a lot of foliage in the winter time, um, then having that light shine at all the foliage is kind of a waste of time and you, you lose a lot of the effect of that light. That's why I like having it closer to the tree. You know, here we're, we're maybe 12, 14, 18 inches away from the base. We're gonna have it shooting almost straight up because I wanna highlight all this, uh, trunking and branching structure as possible as well as now we're getting that light up into uh, the foliage and into the canopy so again with our standard uh, RS up light uh, from FX Luminaire there's lots of other good ones out there uh, I like this guy because it's a it's a real workhorse and that's what we're going to use on this project hey guys thanks so much for watching i hope you guys got some great do-it-yourself landscape lighting tips now please be sure to go to our website at lightingdoctor.ca and check out our how-to page it's full of great resources from our podcast to our video to our most frequently asked questions and also check out our try it before you buy it light where you can actually go now and get one of our premium quality up lights and a king innovation insta light which is basically a battery pack now that allows you to go and run those lights and test them out on your pop property Try it for 14 days. If you don't love it, send it back to us and we'll give you a full refund. And if not, you keep the light at a discounted rate and go and buy what you need for your project. So thanks again for watching. Please be sure to leave us a comment. We love your feedback and have a great day.